In this video, I'll show you how to create a detailed fabric material. It's much simpler than it may seem at first sight. My name is Nikita. On this channel, you'll find a lot of useful lessons on the topic of architectural visualization. Subscribe to don't miss new useful videos. Let's get started. To create this material, you'll need some base elements, which we'll duplicate using several scatterers. I'll show you how to create these elements at the end of the lesson. These are pretty simple geometric shapes. We'll apply our scatterers to this chair. Let's start creating scatterers from scratch. To duplicate meshes across an object, I'll use Chaos Scatter. Click this icon to create a scatter icon. Next, go to the settings, assign the object where the meshes will be scattered, our chair. Right-click on an empty space, select the object to be scattered, click the plus button, select each object, and right-click again on an empty space. Now you can see these boxes appear on the object. Let's select our scatter. This can also be done by selecting the boxes and adjust its settings. We'll scatter the objects across the surface, so we're interested in this section. Here, I'll choose scattering by position, using a grid as our reference. Let's select the second grid. Next, adjust the density. Let's set this value to 1. Scroll down and work on randomizing the transformation of the objects. Let's adjust the offset from 5 to 5 along the x and y axis and from 1 to 0 along the z axis. Currently, our meshes have a standard white corona material. Let's check the interactive render to see how it looks. Nice, but we need more randomness in these small objects, and I'd like to assign a different material, Corona Hair. Let's create it now. Right-click, go to Materials, select Corona, and then Corona Hair MTL. This material is designed for hair, but works perfectly for our needs. I'll adjust the color slightly, making it lighter. Assign the new material to the objects, and see the result. I'll reduce the melanin parameter to make the material less saturated. You may notice an overly chaotic pattern of colors, but as soon as we reduce the size of the elements, it'll look better. Let's continue adjusting the scatterer. We stopped at transformation randomization, so now let's tweak rotation. Set the rotation range for the X and Y axis from minus 15 to 15. Leave the Z axis rotation unchanged. For scale, let's start with a range of minus 10 to 15. But I might tweak these values during the interactive render. Keep in mind that randomization values will vary for each object depending on its UV mapping. Let's start the interactive render to check the changes. The objects are too small, let's make them bigger. The size is good now, but the density is too low, let's increase it. For now, this result works. Next, I'll duplicate the scatterer by holding shift and dragging it with the left mouse button in copy mode. Now I'll use the same objects but scatter them at a larger scale to create accents, as you can see in this render. I'll lower the density and double the scale. Let's see the changes. For this scatterer, I'll switch back to the first grid. I stopped at these values and also increased the offset range for the second scatterer. You can see the result. However, there are some gaps where the white chair material is visible. Let's create a fabric material for the chair that matches the tone and structure of what we've achieved with the scatterers. I'll use these diffuse and normal textures. These textures, along with the fully configured material from this lesson, will be available via the link in the description. The material is a standard Corona Physical MTL. I applied two textures. The diffuse texture is modified with a color correction node, 
and the normal texture is connected to the base bump slot using a Corona Normal node found here. In the Corona Normal node, make sure to enable the Add Gamma to Input checkbox. Then assign the material to the chair. To give the material a warmer tone, I used a Corona Color Correct node, which lets you adjust the blending color. The result looks like this. Now we just need to add some fuzz to enhance the photorealism of the material. I'll duplicate the second scatterer. Remove the scattered objects by selecting them with Shift and pressing the minus button. And instead, add fuzz objects by clicking the plus button and selecting the meshes. I'll show you how to create these meshes shortly at the end of the lesson. Set the scatter method to random and the count to 50 over an area of 60 square millimeters. Let's increase the rotation randomness to minus 30 to 30. Open the interactive render to check the result. There's too much fuzz. Let's make it much smaller. Here's the final result. This is how it looks up close. As you can see, this fabric is great for close-up renders. Now let me show you how I created the geometry we scattered to make our fabric. First, I go to splines and draw a spline of this approximate shape. Press 1 to edit points, right-click, and set the mode to corner. Next, switch to the top view and duplicate the spline. Then, I combine all the splines. You can do this quickly using the Quick Attach script. See more about this in my video on scripts and plugins, link in the description. Here, I select Splines mode and click Attach. Without the script, you can attach splines manually by selecting one, clicking Attach, and choosing the rest. Next, press 3, select the outermost splines, and reduce them slightly. Select the two middle splines, and scale them up. Press 3 again, and randomly select various splines to reposition them for a more chaotic look. Duplicate some splines by holding Shift, and dragging with the left mouse button. Rotate some splines randomly. Then press 1, select all points, and apply a noise modifier. This adds randomness to the point's positions. Adjust the offset range, and reduce the noise scale. You can enable the fractal mode as well. Next, apply an FFD modifier. Select the points and add more noise for irregularity. Now, draw a small triangular spline. Apply a sweep modifier to this shape. Select Use Custom section and pick the triangular spline. In the Sweep modifier, enable Generate Mapping Coordinates to create the correct UV mapping. OK, now I'm going to select this shape and multiply it a few times. You can also rotate any of the shapes 180 degrees. I randomize each of the propagated shapes by going into Noise and changing the Seed parameter. I do this with each of the shapes. I select all of them again, and then I multiply them again, and randomize. So I get this improvised tangle of threads. Then I select all these objects, copy them, 
move them all to the editable field and merge them. You can do it by selecting any of the objects and using the attach key, we select the rest of the objects. You can do this quickly using the quick attach script. Now we have this object, we need to make about six of them by copying our original mesh. I copy it again, randomize each of the objects, convert everything to editable poly. Also, using some oblong texture, we check the direction of the sweep of our object. The fibers should go along the shape, so that in the future, the material corona hair and tail will be displayed correctly. If this is not the case, use the unwrap modifier to rotate the sweep by 90 degrees. Pile objects are created much easier with splines. I choose line and use it to draw some random shape. Then I select all points, right click and turn them to corner mode. Then I need to enable enable in render and enable in viewport for this line. And this liner has turned into geometry. I turn on quiet cap, slightly increase the number of segments. At the liner itself, I reduce the number of segments to a minimum. The liner will be about a millimeter thick. Next, I select the point editing mode, select all points, apply the noise modifier, turn on fractal mode, increase the range on all axes and decrease scale. It is necessary to create about six such objects. That should be enough. Don't forget to leave a like if you find this lesson helpful. Share your opinion in the comments. Your feedback is important to me. See you next time.